Wana Safiwe. Praise be to Jesus. Wana Safiwe Sana. Praise be to Jesus. You may be seated. Unaweza tukaketi. Pastor Millicent. Chukaje Millicent. Thank you so much. Asante sana. For ushering us in to a whole nother level. Kwa sababu ya kuitekeza katika. And so I appreciate you. Kwa hivyo na kushukuru sana. And I thank you for allowing my spirit to soar. And kwa sababu ya absolutely soar. Kwa sababu ya kukubali kutumika na kutuwezesha kufika pale. Can we can we appreciate Pastor Melissa? Tupigie makofi mtugaji Melissa. Thank you so much. We also want to appreciate the worship team. Thank you. I got the memo to dress uh, the right way to make sure that I had the proper dress on to, to join the worship team. Is that okay? Let's also appreciate Mama Sita Alice and Bishop Jimmy as they worship today at Shiloh and they have given us this platform today to and gave us the invitation to preach. Na kwa hivyo tunawashukuru pia Maris pamoja na Scoff Kimani ambao wako pale Chiro walitupatia hii fursa ya kuja kwa Bunyani pamoja. And guess who had a birthday on Friday? Bishop Jimmy. Can we all say Bishop happy birthday Jimmy to pia, him? Uh, Bishop uh, Jimmy, uh, we love you. Happy birthday. Nasema happy birthday. Sing happy, should we sing to him? Tumwambie yes? wewe happy birthday. Okay. Scoff. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, we love you. Happy birthday to you. We love you, Bishop. And speaking of birthdays, our oldest son turns 35 tomorrow. So, to my son, Anthony, I am 8,000 miles away from you, but I am forever a moment in my heart and in my spirit for you. I want to tell you to please give our daughter-in-law, Maggie, a hug, and our grandson, Lincoln, much love from us. Have a happy birthday tomorrow. We love you. Wakijana yangu, igawa niko mairi ya funanda ubali wako, na kutakia siku jema ya kuzaliwa, na kwa nigeritaka uka mpatie mjuku wetu, pamoja na mtoto wetu, kumkupatie, na tunawapenda sana. My name is Reverend Rhonda Clark. This is my husband, Dr. Ron Clark. We have been in Kenya now for 10 years. Can you believe that? Praise be to God. We are here to help the Maasai people. And so pray for us as we continue in this venture to try to get food and relief and help to those that need it the most. Amen. Amen. And we thank God that we are members of DCI KZ. We uh, live here. We love it. We enjoy Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice. So we thank you. And if you are not a member of this church, make this your church. Amen. Amen. Ladies, ladies, can we get an amen? Let me hear you in this worship center in, inside. Let me hear you, ladies. Let me hear you. And those are that are in the overflow, let me hear you. Ladies, ladies. I hear you, I hear you. Let me tell you, this coming, and if you're online following us, type in, I'm here, I'm, I'm a woman and I, I'm listening. Beginning this Wednesday at 6 o'clock, the Daughters of Impact will host its third annual ladies' conference. It will start this Wednesday, the 28th, at 6 o'clock, and we will be ending on Sunday, March the 3rd. And so kindly fill in the form that's online. And also see the table outside, see the folks out there, and they will get you registered so that we know how to best serve you, okay? And I will be here, so please 
come and hug my neck, introduce yourself, tell me hello. I would love to hear about you and your story, a little bit about you, but I love being a part of this community, so thank you so much for doing that, okay? And if you have a little bit of a story, you can see the story of the story of the story of the story. Today the topic will be you reap what you sow. Can I hear you say that? You reap what you sow. Often growing up we hear this phrase passed down through the generations. And what a wonderful thing it is when we reap the good things we've sown, but what about the bad? The Bible talks in detail about reaping what you've sown, good or bad. In Galatians 6, 7, and 8, it reads, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. You have a good memory. <laughs> Our flesh is capable of many unrighteous things. Only when we live through the Spirit, denying our fleshly desires, may we live to please God. This year, I challenge you to evaluate if it's your flesh or is it your spirit and which one of those is dictating your life if it is a spirit you can expect to reap a harvest of goodness and grace can you say that goodness and grace if it is your flesh you need to go to God and start making changes in your life. Amen. Let's lift our hands toward Dr. Ron. As he begins to preach the word, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Dear Lord, we come to you today to ensure that our heart's desires align with your desires. We want to reap a harvest of abundance and joy. Please help us and convict us with anything we may be sowing that is not of you and your word. Expose and bring to light the things that we may be deceived about. Give Dr. Ron wisdom as he brings us the word. And he helps us to understand sowing and reaping. As your word says in Galatians 6.9, let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due time, we will reap a harvest if we do not lose heart. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Asante sana. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. If you're sitting next to your spouse, give them a kiss. Praise the Lord. I think I would just rather listen to Rhonda speak. She's, she's such a insightful person she's my, she's my lover my best friend and I think sometimes she's my disciplinarian turn if you would in your Bible to Mark chapter one, 4 and verse 1 you can bring up our, our uh, powerpoint 
Fungulíme. It seemed faster when I was putting it together. All right, let's read this together. The law of the har- read it with me. The law of the harvest is a principle that states that people will reap what they sow, more than they sow, and later than they sow. Good choices like good seeds will ultimately bring forth good fruit as a reward. Bad choices like bad seeds will ultimately bring bad fruit as a consequence. Amen. Amen. Now, in the first service, I didn't read this, but I'm going to go ahead and read it with you. And we're going to read Mark chapter 4 and verse 1, and then we're going to go a little bit further. Now, rather than us split Swahili and English, we'll just read it in English. To save just a little time. In verse 1 it says, And again he said, he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his teaching, Listen. Now, when you see the word listen in the Bible, what do you think you need to do? Listen. Behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some of the seed fell on the wayside or on the road, and the birds came of the air and came and devoured it. And some fell on the stony ground where it did not have much earth, And immediately it sprang up, but because it had no depth of earth, but when the sun was rose up, it was scorched, and because it had no root in it, it withered away. And some of the seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on the good ground and yielded forth a crop that sprang up and increased and produced some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And he said to them, he who has ears, let him hear, let him hear. Let him, let his ears what? Now, I preach a sermon, I'm not going to do it today, and I'm not even going to give you a very long introduction to it, but there's a difference between hearing and listening. The word here in the Greek is listen. You know, you can hear something and not be listening to it. Some of you that have young children, When your friends come over and your children are playing, are you listening to them? Or are you just hearing them? They're like in the background. But if you live without children, you're listening to everything that's being said. Are you with me? There are a lot of things that are being done, said around us, that we hear. But if somebody asked you what was said, you wouldn't have any idea. What God is wanting you to do today with this scripture is listen with your heart. Amen? Now we're going to go to the 12th laws of the harvest. And we're going to read them through a little quicker than we did in the first service. 
Law number one. Let's read it together. Okay? Law number one. Your seed must be planted. Right, let's read it together. Your seed must be planted. Number two. You must render your seed useless. Number three. You must plant what you expect to harvest. Law number four. Your harvest size is established when your seed is sown. Law number five. Your seed must be planted in good ground. Law number six. Always wait for a period of time between planting and harvesting. Law number seven. You must maintain your crops for a proper harvest. Law number eight. Always sow to your harvest, not from it. Law number nine. Your expense is always highest at harvest time. Law number 10. A part of your harvest is for sowing again. Law number 11. A part of your harvest is for you to keep. Law 12. Your harvest is a miracle. Amen. Now we're going to do these each individually so you'll get to read them again, okay? Law number one, if you'll click to the next... Uh, uh, read that in Swahili. You must plant your seed to get a harvest. Alright. Law number one says, let's read it together. You must plant your seed to get a harvest. Now, do you realize that there are some people that think that it just drops in your lap? Now, I had the benefit of living in Katali for a number of years. And, and there was actually a man, I think he was starting to go a bit senile. That he heard his preacher talk about that you... The, the, about the harvest. So he thought he would exercise a great deal of faith, pray over his ground, but plant nothing. Now his neighbor did what he always did. He prepared the soil, and he sowed his seed. And all through the growing season, he watered the seed, kept it free from, the, from the, the thorns and the thistles. And then at the end, he had an abundant harvest. What do you think the man that sowed nothing had at harvest time? He had weeds. Weeds are free. They'll blow in the air and land on your land and you won't have to do a thing and they, they seem to grow miraculously. Satan can sow seeds or weeds and it seems like you don't have to do a thing. And one day you'll look and see that your life is just full of a mess. But if you want a harvest of the best, you got to sow what you want. Amen? Now look at Genesis 8.22. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest will never cease. You understand that the earth still exists. Everybody do an earth stomp. Just do it. Now I want you to tell me, does the earth still exist? Now if it didn't exist, you would know. Because you would stomp and nothing would be there. 
Piga mguu na hakuna kitu kilikuepo. But as long as we have an earth, kila wakati tunapo ardhi ama ulimwengu, we are going to have to cooperate with the earth. Shati taungana pamoja na ulimwengu huu in order for it to benefit us. Na hii ulimwengu huu utufaidi. Now turn to Galatians 6:7 it can be on the screen. Galatia 6 mstari wa 7 tuwekewe katika runinga. It says be not deceived. Nasema na usidanganyike. God is not mocked. Mungu hadhihakiwi. For whatever a man sows, kwa sababu rote apandalo mwanadamu, that shall he also reap. Hilo dido atakalovuna. Do you understand that a seed reproduces after its kind? Unajua kwamba begu inazaa kulingana na aina yake. If you sow maize, ukipanda maidi, you will not get watermelon. Ni kwamba hautavuna tikiti maji. If you sow strife, ni kama ukipanda mavurutano, you will not get peace. Hautapata amani. Hello. Hello. We can say amen. Naweza sema amina. You're going to get what you sow. Ni kwamba utapata utapata ambacho umekipanda. In fact, you don't get just what you sow. Hautapata ambacho tu ulikipanda. You'll get more than you sow. Utapanda zaidi ya kiwango ulichopanda. And this is why marriages where people are yelling and screaming at one another and saying things that they shouldn't say to one another are always surprised that they get more back than they ever gave. And it's like you get in a cycle and things get worse and worse and worse. Write this down. I need to reverse the curse. I need to reverse the curse. Now how do you reverse a curse? You do the opposite that what, than what brought the curse. Instead of sowing strife you sow love instead of negative words you say positive words and you don't say to yourself well I've been positive for at least three minutes and that hasn't the, the other person hasn't changed you see it's going to take some time before you start saying the things that you should say and then you start getting them back. But it is definite. It is a law. You must plant what you want to harvest. Let me give you another thing just to make a note of. Treat someone else the way you want to be treated. If you do not like the way your spouse is treating you, then treat your spouse the way you want to be treated. Eventually, that seed will take root. And one day, you will start getting back what you're dishing out. Turn to your neighbor and tell the neighbor he's talking about the people behind us. Now, go to the next slide. And hit hit the 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 grow button. Uh, to... Now that's not the grow button. Go to the next one. Now that's not it either. There's a black there's a black slide, and at the bottom of it, now you're go, you're going further. There's a black slide with a little arrow. You hit it.
You know, the pastor always thinks he's in control of the service. But in actual fact, it's the media. Can you find it? It was the next slide after number two. Is there a cameraman around? Page five. Slide number five. All right. Zoom in. Zoom, 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 zoom. Zoom, 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 zoom. Now, what you're seeing is one seed. Yeah, I can't make it any bigger. And this one seed is on a time lapse. And this is actually days. And it's growing. Do you see it growing? Huh? Oh, he's, he's repeating. We're good. Now, just continue to watch this grow. Now, while you're sleeping, it's still growing. It's doing its work, whether you're watching it or not. And this is the nature of the seed. Now what do you think this is going to be? Hmm? Got any ideas? Isn't it beautiful? Now one seed produce this beautiful flower. And what I wanted you to notice is the time lapse. If you want, how many of you would like a Mercedes? There's at least eight of us. If you're sowing a seed, to get a Mercedes one day, you're going to have to sow a lot of seed and it's going to take some time. Now, if you want a boda boda, you can probably sow less seed and get your boda boda quicker. But a boda boda is not a Mercedes. The scripture talks about in the book of James about sowing seed and getting grass. You can sow seed one night and by the next day grass is already starting to come up. But grass does not last very long. So if you're sowing for something that is bigger and more enduring, or more expensive, it takes longer. So don't be the believer who begins to tithe for a month and thinks he should have a massive breakthrough in his finances. Write this down. Giving is a lifestyle. Alright, now we're going to go to number six, the, the, the screen number six, law two. Are we good up there? You got it? Law 2 says, once you sow your seed, it dies and becomes useless to you. 
Now, when I was a pastor, there are not very many times in the 30 years that I had people ask for their tithe back. But I did have it happen. I remember a man gave a large amount of money on Sunday. And on Monday, he was in my office saying he thinks he made a mistake. Now, if I remember correctly, he gave in excess of $100,000. And so I said to my secretary, go have the check cut. And I gave him right then and there his 100000 back. I said, I think you've made a terrible mistake. Not because we need your money, but because you need to give. That week, he lost his million dollar a year job. Now, you see, to maintain a job like that, you've got to sow. But by Friday, this man dug up his seed and had lost what was most important to him. And he came to me and he says, I think I messed up. I said, you think you messed up? So I took the time to teach him. You know, a man that gets to a million dollar a year job can probably get back there one day. Don't let... Failure keep you on the ground. So I said, while we're here talking, let's have a cup of tea and let's just talk about what happened. And so we spent an hour and I taught much of this message to him. And he said, I no longer have the 100,000. I said, what do you have? He said, I have $1,000 to my name. I said, will this $1,000 solve all your problems? He says, it won't even come close. So I said, well, what are you going to do? He says, I'm giving it all. And he gave all his $1,000. Within five years, this man owned the company. But he never dug up his seed again. Do you understand me? The, the best ground that you have is your church. Not uh, the, the prophet that's on TV or the visiting preacher from America. It's your church. When you sow into your local church on a regular basis, you are sowing into the best ground in that is described in the scripture. It may not look like it to you, but the church is 100-fold ground. Turn to your neighbor, this is good ground. 
Now say this to your other neighbor because he does not seem to be listening. Say to your other neighbor, if I, if I take care of God's business, he will take care of my business. Say, if I take care of God's man, God will take care of me. Now, this is why the church ground is the hundredfold ground. God has left his business in your hands. And so as you regularly sow, the 10% of your increase into the church, God commits to take care of your business for you. That's good ground. Now, in the first service, we had prayer for the government. I, I was praying myself and didn't hear some of what was this service. But Millicent was praying because the, there seems to be a lot of up and down with you know, the dollar and all of that stuff. Write this down. My economy. My economy is not tied to the world's economy. Let me tell you, Kenya can go broke and you will prosper. Don't, don't listen to Citizen TV and there's a few other huh? Nation, K, K, T, K, I don't know. Don't read the Nairobian. <laughs> Look, the, I, I had a, uh, an enemy, I mean a, another man. This man in, in our local newspaper wrote some of the worst articles about me I had ever, I didn't even recognize the man. That he wrote about. I would say to Rhonda, who is he talking about? And she'd say, you. I had no idea what he was talking about. But one day I asked him, I said, why do you write such the things that you know are lies? He said, Dr. Ron, your job is to tell the truth. My job is to sell newspapers. I get the feeling watching the news or reading the newspapers. I'm not sure they're as committed to truth as you think they are. Now, I'm not accusing anyone. I don't speak enough Swahili to know how to disagree with too many of them. But my heart tells me they're selling newspapers and they're selling advertising time on TV. Now, most of you don't realize that Rhonda and I were, were policemen back in America. Now, she was a, a policewoman a lot longer than I was a policeman. But there's, and I was a soldier. And I have a curiosity about me that I don't encourage you to have. Do you remember all the riots that were occurring downtown? 
the riots. Hmm? Riots. Migomo? Is that right? Yes. Yes, Migomo. We had Migomo downtown. I'm a madaman. Huh? I'm a madamana. A madamana. Migomo. A madamana. I think it was worse than that. It was higher. Now, I, I was in the, the fog that they shot the bullets that produced the, the, the fog that burned your eyes and your skin. When I, was a, when I was a soldier, I had to go in a room that was filled with it. And the smell and the taste and the, the feeling of it reminded me of being 18 again. Now I know I look 18. But I am not 18. However, that night on the television, I don't know if I should say that it was from Citizen TV or not. I probably shouldn't say that. So if we'll just keep it amongst friends. They said that the, the government was near collapse because of what was happening in downtown. Now, what I saw downtown was about four or five hundred young men. There were not the thousands described by the TV print, the announcer. And they ran around and caused mischief until they got tired and thirsty. Because the person that was provoking them didn't offer them any tea and no mandazi. So when they got hungry enough and thirsty enough, they went home. Your government was no closer to collapsing than it is right now. But you see, to tell you that, that only four or five hundred boys were downtown causing mischief, and when they got too tired, they went home, and everything's going to be okay, doesn't make you want to watch the news. Every night has to be exceeded by another night of something much, much worse. Or people don't watch the news. Are you with me? Remember, the pastor is telling the truth. And the presenter is selling airtime. If you will watch or read the news, I never said this in the first service, but I'm saying it in here for a reason. I have no idea why. But do so with a heavy, heavy dose of skepticism. They're probably only telling you part of the truth. Are you with me? So law two says once you sow your seed, it dies and it is useless to you. Don't dig it up. Okay, now we're going to number three. Number three says you must plant your seed why am I not seeing it up here like we did the first service? I don't... It, it really would help me, guys, if you would bring up here. That, you're too far ahead. Go back to number three. 
There we are. All right. Let's read this together. You must plant your seed according to what you want to harvest. Now let's read Galatians 6, 6 through 10 together in the English. Everybody together. Nevertheless, the, all of us. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction. Now what that simply means is when somebody teaches you. You need to. Bless them financially, especially when it's your pastor or a professional, like you would if you went to a doctor and they treated your body. Your pastor is worth more to you than your doctor. And so I'm saying this to the board. When it comes time to his paycheck, just remember that when the doctor says there's nothing else I can do, your bishop will say to you, I know the great physician, and there's still a lot we can do to stop this cancer or whatever's happening. Does everybody understand that? It goes on to say, do not be deceived. Let's go read it together. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. For whoever sows to please their flesh, from their flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not... Look, the greatest, the number one reason why you are not getting answers to prayer, write this down. Is you're giving up before the answer gets to you. You're giving up before you get your answer. So when you're praying about big issues, things that are, are life and death, or you need, you need a, a, a miracle breakthrough, it is important that you not give up on God. Alright, I want you to jump down to Law 4. We're going to move a little quick right now. Law 4 says the size of your harvest is determined by how much you sow. If you sow a little, you reap a little. If you sow a lot, you'll reap a lot. The scripture teaches us in 2 Corinthians 9, 6-9. And I'm only going to read a portion of this. You can read it at home. It says, remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will reap generously each one of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion nobody makes you give what you give for God loves a cheerful giver and God is able to bless abundantly so that in all things look at this now in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound for every good work at all times, 
having all that you need, you will abound for at all times you will have all that you need. Kwa kila wakati utapata ambacho kila kitu unachokihitaji. And this is when you start employing these laws. Na hii ni wakati tu utaanza kufanyisha kazi sheria hizi. In your life. Katika maisha yako. You're going to see a miracle breakthrough. Utaona mpenyo mkuu wa kimiujiza. And the things that you're talking about today. Na mambo ambayo yananenwa sasa. And in this season of your life. Na wakati wa msimu huu wa maisha yako. You will not be talking about. Hautayakuwa yakiyasema yale. Next year. Uh, if you learn to give now are you with me law number five you, your seed must be sown in good ground now there was maybe half of the crowd that's in here now but ask in the last service how many of you and I, I'm not asking you to respond right now are not tithing and then I ask how many of you didn't even buy a brick for the new the new buildings now in a service a third of this size we had over a hundred people say they were, they were not regular tithers. And we had 30 or 40 people that said they had not participated in the, the brick buying that we did a few weeks ago. But let me you, if you want a breakthrough in your finances, there's no better ground than right here. And I would encourage you today that you commit, I'm going to begin to tithe 10% of my increase and next year, I promise you, you will be in better financial condition than you are right now. I'm almost ready to tell you, if you're not and you tithe every week, I'll give you your money back. But that doesn't make sense because you'll be much better off. And that just would be manipulating you. But I'm telling you right now, the reason some of you have not reached your next level in finance is not because God doesn't have a plan for you. It's because you're not tithing. Say this out loud. If I take care of God's business, say it like you mean it. If I take care of God's business, God will take care of my business. Now, there was a man over in Mukuru Sinai, but it was not that. It was Mukuru something else. Huh? Huh? It's a much poor area. I mean, it's the poorest of the poor. And this man would sell fruits just on a little uh, a piece of plastic. He would sell fruits during the day. And this is eight years ago. And he heard me preach for the first time on a miracle breakthrough in finances. And he started tithing on the little bit that he got from the selling of the fruits. And every week as, as he went through the year, he went from selling off this little piece of plastic to what, to what did you call it? A kiosk. He had a kiosk. 
And then the next year he went from a kiosk to a, a store. And then he went from one store to two stores to three stores and the last time I saw him which was last year he took me to his big warehouse. And he said I'm having to buy my third truck because I, I, these two trucks that I have are not... The, they're not sufficient to keep these stores fully supplied. And, and this is a, this is a man that started with nothing. He started with one truck. And he said, oh, this is a man that started with nothing. And now he owns his own home. Now, so I'm not telling you something to sell you anything. I don't get a paycheck from this church. This is my home church like yours. I tithe here. I give here. So I'm not saying this so that I benefit at all from, from what I'm saying to you. I'm saying this so that you and I can benefit here. So I'm telling you that if you give this year, next year will be a better year. And this man in eight years went from a little, a little nothing, a little, I don't know what they called it, but a little pad to three stores, a warehouse, and three big delivery trucks. Go to law number six. You must always wait a period of time between planting and harvesting. Write down Ecclesiastic 3, 1 and 2. We'll, we'll read it later. You can read it later. But the idea is this doesn't just happen instantly. You've got to be patient. Law number seven. You must maintain your crops for maximum yield. For example, you have to water your crops. Well, the Bible says the washing of the water of the word. That simply means that you want to speak the word of God over your, your harvest. You want to say over what you've planted what you want it to look like when you harvest it. Amen. Amen. Law 8. Sharia the promise of the harvest is not without hard work. You can't just throw seed in the ground and then go take a nap. How many of you have a garden? Or you've worked on a garden? Or you know what a garden is? Or you can spell garden? Are you, you've heard of the letter G? Well, that got everybody. I'm, I'm so glad. But if you've had a garden, you've got to work it. You've got to dig it, you've got to dung it, and you've got to water it. So don't think that this is just going to be dropped in your lap. You've got to put some hard work in. Law 9, your expenses always go up at harvest time. Now, if you find yourself putting in more money right now than you've ever done with, with the, what appears to be the least results, it's because you're getting ready to get a breakthrough. How many of you are suffering a hard place right now financially? Just raise your hand. Let me see your hand. There's honest people all over here. Just get ready. Your breakthrough is coming. Amen. Law 10, a part of your harvest is for sowing again. 
you never spend all your money on yourself. The first 10% of what you get, give it right back to God. Don't hesitate a week. Don't hesitate a week. Number 11, part of your harvest is for you to keep. Ladies, look at me. Go shopping. Law 12. Your harvest is a miracle. I said your harvest is a miracle. Now I'd like for everybody to bow your head for just a second. I preached this a different way than I did last, last service. I think I've got a different message out, but I think it's, it's just as impactful. Let me quickly ask you. And I really would like everybody to close your eyes. But if you're here in this room and you are not a tither and keep that camera on me if you wouldn't mind. If you're not a tither and you want to see a miracle breakthrough in your finances and you're willing to become a tither or start tithing again, I want you to raise your hand all over this room. One, two, ten, fifteen, do you see all the ones I'm talking about? I mean, keep raise it up high. If, if you're outside in one of the tents, or under, lift your hand up high. God sees you. It's not for I, I'm seeing many more than I saw Millicent in, in the last service. Many more. Just keep your hand up. We're getting ready to pray. Raise it up high. If you're outside and you have your hand raised, shout amen. I can hear. Now, with your hand raised, we're going to pray. I'm going to break a curse off your life. Because non tithers have a curse on their life. Because the harder you work, the behinder you seem to get. And, and we are done with this today. Millicent, come up here with me, please. Just come up here. We're going to pray. I just need an agreer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so happy for all these people that have their hand raised. Father, in the name of Jesus. We come against this curse, this thief. The scripture teaches us. The thief cometh but for to steal and to kill and destroy. And I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. I pray over it must be over a hundred hands could even be even higher than that that when they sow today that you will put miracle fertilizer on that on that seed and that you will meet their immediate needs now like grass being sown so if they're hungry, they'll have food. If they need a job, they'll get a job. You're going to give them a miracle breakthrough. And on the big things that they desire to have in their life, as they faithfully give in the months to come, they're going to begin to see the breakthroughs. 
And I believe next year this time every person whose hands raised that faithfully tithes will have received their miracle breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. One more thing. Just keep your head bowed. If you have not participated in buying a brick now Rhonda and I bought our first brick it was like one of the first Sundays we were here Just, and this brick goes to support the, the school and the other buildings that are getting ready to be built and that's really an investment in the next generation when Bishop Jimmy gets finished with all of what he's building, it isn't going to be for him. It's going to be for you and your children's children. So we've got to get a, we've got to get a vision beyond ourselves. Be willing to build the things that are going to impact our grandchildren. So with every head bowed one more time. And every eye closed. If you have not bought a brick. Rhonda and I committed in the last service that we're going to buy another one. And that's 5,000 shillings. And if it takes you a month to get that 5,000 shillings together, all you have to do is mark on your giving envelope. Just, just write the term brick. And you'll be investing in your, your children and grandchildren's future. How many of you here will join me in buying another brick? Let me see your hand. If you take care of God's house, how many of you know that God may get you your own house? You see, we're going to build five church houses, five, five churches out of this. And we're going to build a school out of this. So if you need a house, or you want to upgrade your house, and you're willing to buy a brick with me this next month, a miracle brick towards your new house. Lift up your hand all over this place. Say, God, I'm not letting this opportunity go by. I need a breakthrough. Now, do you see all the hands? Outside, inside. Pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I take care of your house, I thank you in advance that you're going to take care of my house. I thank you, Lord, for the extra. The 5,000 is the extra. This is above the tithe. This is a miracle. But I thank you, God, that you're going to give me a breakthrough. And next month, as we begin to, to minister, I'll be able to share my testimony of the good things that God has done for me. In Jesus' name.